then how can you respond like David did? Seems like there's really nothing to respond to if you think about it. So remember, David's prayer for God to reveal his secret sin and keep him from willful sin came after considering how creation glorifies the Lord and after the declarations about the value of God's word. So how can we make a declaration about God's word if we don't read it? How can you make a prayer to change your sinful desires if you don't ever spend time with a God, the only God who can change them? Of course you're defeated. Of course you can't control your tongue. Of course you're still looking at porn. Of course you're still mistreating your family. Of course. Of course. So you might be thinking, man, okay, I get it but I still live in the world, and I, I just, I, you know, give me a break. Now, I know, <laughs> I know, I know that Jesus died on the cross, I know that he was resurrected, and that we are no longer under the law, but we're under grace. I know, I know no one is perfect, but the point that I'm trying to make this morning is that we should have an ever-growing desire to stop doing wrong things, not for the sake of to stop doing wrong things, but as a response, as a response from the deepening of our relationship with Jesus. So I think sometimes we change what it means to be under grace uh, because of our refusal to walk away from the sin that we want to just keep committing, our habitual sin, our willful sin in our lives. And sometimes we just, yeah, we just don't want to. So in our attempt to reconcile the, that desire that won't go away, that desire to sin, that desire to do the wrong things with the fact that we are called to be dead, we are called to be crucified with Christ, we are called to be no longer living and living according to our fleshly de desires, we simply say, I'm under grace. God will forgive me. Nobody's perfect. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Doesn't that seem so cheap? Doesn't it? Very cheap. So let's imagine this. Let's say that I'm hungry. I love steak. My mother-in-law isn't available <laughs> to make me some steak. <laughs> um, so I'm like, all right, I don't have a lot of money, and I want some steak. Let me see. I think, I know McDonald's sells, they sell meat, right? They sell meat. I'm going to go to McDonald's, and I'm going to get me a steak, because it's cheap. It's not going to cost me much, and I don't even think about it. So I go to McDonald's, and I get a steak. It's still meat, maybe, mostly. It's still technically food. It'll still fill me up, right? But it's not real steak. It's not real steak. It's not something that I savor. It's not something that I appreciate because it's cheap. It's not real steak. So if I want real steak, I'm going to go to Taste of Texas. I'm going to go to, to Morton's or what's that other place? Uh, Brennan's or Brenner's. I don't know. I'm going to go somewhere to get real steak, right? <laughs> and so with the real steak, it's going to cost me a good amount of money, $50, $60, something like that, if it's good. And so because it's costing me a lot of money, I'm not, I'm not just going to scarf it down. I'm not just going to be like, I'm so hungry, I want steak. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to savor it. I'm going to reflect on it. I'm going to smell it. I'm just going to fully enjoy that steak because it costs me, because it's so good, because it takes skill to make it. You can't just throw a good steak on the grill and leave it and pick it up. You got to watch it. You got to put a temperature gauge in it. If you want a medium like you should eat steak, you just can't 
not pay attention to it. Cheap grace can cover you. It can cover you. But you aren't really experiencing what it means to live under grace. <laughs> the kind of grace that moves you to consider the cost. To consider the cost. It cost Jesus his life. Jesus was beaten. Jesus was tortured. Jesus was murdered on a cross that was meant for us. So should our response be, well, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm just going to keep on living how I want because I'm a sinner. Jesus will forgive me. No. No. God's gift of grace should produce a desire in us to change. It should produce in us a faithful heart that cries out like David in Psalm 27 saying, Your face, Lord, I will seek. We shouldn't be satisfied with our old way of living. Paul says it like this in Romans 6. Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who have died to sin continue to live in it? How can we continue to live in it? We are supposed to be dead, crucified with Christ, no longer living, but Christ living in us. The life that we live in the body, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. 